Hi there, everybody, and welcome to the Top Coat 1.5 training videos. In this video, we are going to be talking about the modifiers tab. I'm going to assume you are already familiar with Top Coat, or you've already watched the Quick Start. Uh, I've already got an HDRI Studio in here from Grayscale Gorilla to give us something to reflect. And I've already got a model in here, so let's go ahead and open up Top Coat. I already assigned a new shortcut to it of Alt T, so I can just pop it open really easily like that. And we're going to talk about the modifiers tab. Now there's some really cool changes that we've made to the modifiers tab and it's going to be easiest to show it if I just maybe make a flakes channel. So we've added on flakes. Unfortunately flakes are so tiny they don't show up in this window. Uh, also that's a standard renderer and this is all physical setup. Uh, out, let's go ahead and go to our render settings and make sure we're on light kit medium. Well, actually I'm just going to go to light kit medium but now we're in the physical render and that should work. Also, let me make sure I'm applying to everything. So anyway, by default, we've got something to reflect. I've got a flakes channel in there. And now you can see we got this nice, shiny, blinged out, like sparkly whaley. So I'm going to go ahead and hit render. And now you can see we get these nice little flakes everywhere. So what we're actually talking about is the modifiers tab. So let's click on that. And immediately you should see a bunch of changes uh, to what we had before. And the biggest one is, look, the sliders aren't all lined up in the middle. Uh, they used to be. But we're just talking about this as if you've never used Top Coat before. So... Um, we, uh, these sliders all give you, as long as you only have one material and one layer selected, they give you accurate feedback as to what you're currently looking at, uh, in this material. So, um, uh, I can now grab like our noise scale and I can say, I want it to be a lot bigger. Let's say 500%. It's so big that they might actually show up in here, but maybe not. I'm just going to go ahead and render our picture viewer. And now you can see that our flakes are much bigger than they used to be. So he's getting to be a little bit more like a mirror ball. Uh, but, or we can slide it down to a really tiny size. And now they're going to be tiny little micro kind of glittery things on top of them. Uh, we have our bump depth, uh, which is giving us accurate detail as far as how deep the bump is. We have our Fresnel amount, which is accurate information as to how much Fresnel. Let's go to make a chrome material and maybe talk about some of these sliders. So uh, the basic one is our reflection amount. How much reflection is there? So right now there's 100%. So I can pull back on that, and I see there's a lot less, and we pull it all the way up, and there's a lot more. And you can even go beyond 100%, and we do 200, and now it's going to start extra blinging out. Uh, we have blur amount. How blurry is the texture? So I can, right now it's 100% chrome, zero blur. But we can start pulling this up and you're going to see it gets blurrier and blurrier. And you can crank it all the way up here. And now it's so blurry, it kind of looks like just a normal color channel, which is actually pretty useful. It's a nice way of getting GI, a GI look without using GI. Uh, we have our Fresnel amount. And that's kind of uh, the, like the angle in which we're viewing the object depends on how much reflection there is. So as we increase the Fresnel amount, there is a lot of reflection on the edges and less as we're looking straight at it, which enables you to see through it to an underlying layer. So if we were to say, uh, I'm going to create a base layer, which is nice and white, and add a chrome on top of it. And in order to see this effect, I need to make sure chrome is set to normal. So you see it's completely overriding it. Uh, so we can't see through to the layer underneath. Uh, and in fact, why don't we even make the layer underneath red? So you can't see it at all. But if we go into the modifiers tab, we have Chrome selected. As I start pulling in some Fresnel, we're starting to see through that layer to the layer underneath. And depending on the angle we're viewing it, you can still see we get this nice blown out highlight, but all the rest of it, we're almost entirely seeing through the layer below. So that's what Fresnel does for us. Uh, next up, we have our, I'm gonna just reset everything to Chrome. Uh, next up, we have our bump settings, but we need to add in a bump channel in order to use those. So why don't we go ahead and add in something, something simple and straightforward, even a weird one. Let's use crystalline. Don't use that one too often. So now you can see if we go back to modifiers, we are getting accurate feedback as to the current bump depth. And we've changed the default from 100% to 30 because it's just, you know, it just looks a little bit better. So if I hit render on here, you see we have a bump, like a crystalline looking bump on top of Whaley. And... Um, so now we can change the bump scale by cranking that up or down. You see it gets a lot deeper or we can be very subtle with it. Just like a little bit of imperfections on top of the surface at 4%. So it just breaks up these highlights just a little bit. Uh, and then we have our noise scale. So we're going to crank this up again and let's go to a noise scale and let's say 500%. So it's going to be way bigger, way bigger, uh, crystalline look on here where these are getting broken up like this. And then let's see, let's, uh, 
Mm, I guess next up was, would be the blur channels. We've got to talk about those. So I'm going to go and create a new lacquer. So it's just a lacquer layer by itself. Now let's go to our blur channel. I'm going to throw in, what's a nice blatant one? I think Frost 3 is like the most blatant one. So Frost 3, you see, it looks like it's all frosted. Let's go ahead and render on him. Whaley's a little bit large of a model, so it might be a little tiny on him. Eh, it looks pretty good. Um, so you see, you've got these nice blurred out areas. Uh, and then these very shiny areas. So if we go back to our modifiers tab, we've now unlocked our high blur clamp and our low blur clamp. So what I can do is start saying I want to start clamping in how much high blur there is. And as I pull this further and further down, you see that it's really blowing out and overriding. Like all, like uh, there's a lot more blur. Like the blurry areas are a lot stronger. So if I render right now, a lot of that subtlety of it's gone. And now it's just like blatant areas of blurriness at full power. And we can pull that back up again. In addition to that, so now we're back to default, we can change the color. These are each like a double parameter. So right now it's saying like, I want a lot of blur. Our high blur is maximum. It's white, full blur. But I can change that to like a darker gray. And now what we're saying is I want to go from maximum shininess to a little bit of blur. So now if I hit render, it's the same effect, but it's a lot more subtle, just that little bit on the edges. You can also do the inverse where it's like, oh, uh, I want it to be frosty, but it's not frosty on top of a perfectly reflective material. Like the base material is a little bit rough. So I can grab our low blur and add in just that little bit of initial blur. So now like the shiny, the perfectly shiny layer now is actually a little bit rough. So this is a very subtle control, um, but it gives you so many, so much additional control over the way this, this looks. Uh, it's also very important when you're doing something like throwing uh, your channels I'm going to put that back up to default. Uh, when you're throwing your channels around, so if I were, for instance, to grab, uh, let's go down to my favorite demo for this, which is, um, is it rough? I thought it was worn. Uh, let's do layers. So I'm going to grab layers too. If we right click on layers, we can add it to our blur channel from the bump. So now we've added this layer and now uh, into the blur channel. If I also just normal click it, so now it's in the bump and the blur channel. So now if I hit render, I think it'll look pretty cool. And But you'll see it's kind of, it might be the opposite of what I want. You'll see that we have like these dings, like these little divots where it's been damaged. And those are very shiny. Uh, and then we'll have everything else, which is very rough. And I mean, maybe that's what you want. Like it's shiny underneath. But uh, I kind of want the opposite. So I'm going to actually just grab these two and flip them around. And now you'll see it's actually blurry inside and shiny outside. And I think when something is getting damaged, I think that's the way you want to do it, where it's blurry or inside. And here's where, like, the clamps start coming in, um, where if I start pulling our, our high blur, which is inverted, if I start pulling this up higher, then what we're doing is we're clipping it higher, where these start getting very pinched. And if I pull it almost, pretty much all the way up to the top... Then what we're saying is everything even a little bit below the surface becomes maximum blur, and then everything that's the surface will be very shiny. And now we're going to get this really, I think this is one of the coolest looks, where we get this really broken up, uh, like he's dinged up, and then as soon as it's dinged, it's really rough underneath. And if we were to crank our, our bump depth up a little bit here, maybe double the size of it, um... Then we should get these nice deep pits, and as soon as it goes a little bit below the surface, they get very blurry. Um, so those, yeah, high blur and low blur, are very important, um, very important controls. We've added in, well, I guess it's not just added in, but we've got a couple of basic controls here. We have turn off color channel. So let's see what that would do. Let's say you make a new material here, just like a nice white material. And let's say we add in like a lacquer, but you're like, you know what? I don't want that white material underneath. Uh, you can go into your modifiers tab and say, turn off color channel. It just turns off the color channel. Um, next up we have randomized noise and this one's actually really powerful as well. Let's go ahead and throw on, let's add in layers again cause it's a nice blatant one. We can see it really clearly and hit render and let's see if we can find a good example here. I guess I didn't, uh, I haven't reset this material. So let's go ahead and reset it. So we're looking at it blank, uh, back to layers and let's crank the bump and give it a render and see what it looks like. So it's nice and bumpy. Looking good. Oh wait, I made a new material. I haven't applied it, so it was it was looking it was looking cool, but it's still the other one. Uh, I messed up by making two materials. Uh, go ahead and hit render, 
And now you'll see that we get, it's all sh super shiny, but we get these nice dents going in. But let's say it's like, oh, look at this. It's right on this eyebrow. I don't want it to be on this eyebrow right there. So we can actually click on randomize noise. And now it, it is the same type of effect, but it's completely randomized the way the noise works. So this pattern, while being kind of mathematically similar, has been completely rearranged and moved. And now you see that's not right on his eyebrow anymore. Everything's moved around. Now that will actually change all of the bump, blur, and mask channels simultaneously. Any that exist on it, they'll change all of them. So uh, randomized noise works for any of those. Oh, uh, what's up next? Uh, next up would be remove all reflectance. That typically would come from if you're working with like a new material. So let's say uh, if I make this new material, it, we've got default specular. So under modifiers, I could just be like, you know what? Remove all the reflection. Let's just go away. Um, so really s straightforward button there. Go back to this one. Uh, we've got color to bump. And all that would do is if, let's say we had a some sort of JPEG inside of our color channel. Uh, I don't think I have any handy. But let's just throw it in this. Let's say we had that in our color channel. If I were to click color to bump, then it's going to now move this into the reflectance lacquer uh, bump channel and it automatically put it in here. So just an important thing to note there. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and make a new material. Make sure that's applied. Uh, okay, cool. So that, that was color to bump. Next up is invert mask. So we've already, uh, well, check out the mask channel if you're not familiar with mask. But uh, let's go ahead and create maybe a chrome material. If I click on maybe this cracks material, and I hit render, then we're going to see that the cracks themselves are very, very reflective. Uh, and we've masked out the rest so we're seeing to the layer underneath. Now there isn't a layer underneath, we can add one. I can add a new base layer, drag it below, maybe make it blue. And now you should see that we've got these shiny cracks on top of a blue layer. But let's say we want it to be the opposite. All we have to do is go into modifiers and say invert mask. Oh, I have to make sure I have my Chrome selected, the correct layer, invert mask. And now when I render, we're going to see that he's all very shiny everywhere except where the cracks are. So inverting the mask. And then the last up is very similar. Let's just start again from scratch. Uh, make a lacquer. If I go to blurs, I can go and grab, let's say, wet mud. And let's crank up the strength. We should be able to see that. Mm, that's actually not, the, oh, that's not the best example. I want to just make it as blatant as possible. I'm going to grab dents. So we've got this, these dents going. Let's crank up the bump. And then you'll see we got these nice dents like hammered into the side of Whaley. But if I click on invert bump, then it's going to flip them around. And now it's going to be a little bit more like cellular. So it's like cells pushing out from Whaley. Um, and then we've got our color modifier. So I can click on that and change this to like red. And now you see it's changed this layer, you know, this, this uh, lacquer to red. Um, so if you had like a bunch of layers, let's say there's a base layer and then a matte layer and then a dull and then a lacquer. That means we could grab all of these layers, go to modifiers, and just simultaneously change them, you know, all to yellow. And now they all change. Um, so that's what that modifier does. Um, now, important to note is uh, with the modifiers, if you have more than one layer selected, then it's going to be modifications on the, on the layer. It's going to display completely differently. So for instance, let's say I have a base layer and a chrome. So we have two different layers. And if I hold down shift, I can actually select both layers. If we were going to modifiers, you see everything is zeroed out because we have two different layers selected. So let's say we've got, these are all very shiny. Um, I want to add some blur. So I just pull this up and what's going to happen is it's going to drag up. And when I let go, it's going to snap back to zero, but it's going to add that amount of blur to both layers. Uh, a bunch of things you have to realize though, is like something like base. Base was already at 100% blur and you can't go beyond it. Like, uh, that's just a clamp. You can't go beyond 100% blur. So even we have more than one selected, if I start cranking up my blur amount, that base can't go higher. But you will see that the chrome increased by 26% because I dragged it up 26%. If I were to grab uh, noise and throw on maybe some dirt, I've got more than one layer selected. So now we just have to base it off this multi-multiplier uh, modifier tab so I can grab like our noise uh, depth and just crank it so that's like full and I can grab our noise scale and make it a lot bigger so the noise scale should go up on both of them kind of as a relative thing um, making these changes to multiple materials it might be useful when you want like everything a little bit brighter or everything a little bit duller like let's say I had a bunch of materials and let's say like you know 
um, let's say we, the layer here was like orange, and we have a bunch of different colors and all these different materials, I can actually grab all three and be like, you know what? I want to pull back a little bit on the reflection here. And now all of them will get a little duller. Um, so that's where these modifiers, when they're zeroed out, is we have to modify them uniformly. Having one material and one layer selected, though, is what's going to give you give you your accurate feedback. I think that will cover everything in the modifiers tab. Thanks for checking out the video and top coin top coat 1.5. Uh, I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks.